It's also important to understand a few things about conductors and insulators. Think again about the structure of an atom. Protons and neutrons are down in the nucleus, and very, very strong nuclear forces hold them there. The electrons are around the nucleus, and they're more loosely bound, particularly those on the outer edge of the atom. And in most metals, there are a lot of electrons that are bound to their nuclei so loosely that we call them free electrons. And they're basically free, which means they're not really attached to any, any nucleus at all. So imagine a big piece of wire here. This is made of metal. And if you were to zoom in really close, you would see atomic nuclei. The, the term nuclei, N-U-C-L-E-I, is just the plural of nucleus. So there are atomic nuclei down in here. These are what I'm drawing are the individual atoms of the wire. And then around the nuclei are these electrons. So you imagine a bunch of electrons in the wire. And they're there naturally. You don't have to put them in there. They exist automatically. And inside a wire, there are uh, inside just about any piece of metal, there are a significant number of electrons that, that are so loosely bound to the atoms that they're basically called free electrons, which means they're free to roam through the material, and they do. And at any given time, they could just be moving around in there in a random direction, moving from one part to the other. They're just free to move about. So in other words, this electric charge, these electrons, which contain electric charge, can move through the wire. That means that current can flow through the metal. And that's what we call a conductor. It can conduct electricity. Electrons can flow through it. Charge can move through it relatively easily. That's what a conductor is. Other materials that don't have many free electrons are not good electrical conductors. These materials are what we call electrical insulators. So something that is a good conductor is a poor insulator. And something that is a good insulator is a poor conductor. And most materials are either one or the other. Most materials are either very good conductors or very good insulators. And here are some materials that are examples of good conductors. Gold. Gold is the best electrical conductor, and so is silver. Silver, Gold and silver both conduct electricity very, very well. Gold and silver, though, are not all that commonly used in, in electrical devices, for obvious reasons. Gold and silver are both very expensive. They're rare, and they're what, what is called precious metals. Because of their rarity, they command a high price. Copper and aluminum are also good conductors, and they're a lot cheaper. Copper is the most common. Most electrical devices you, that you have, like a television set, or a computer, or a computer printer, or your stereo, or light, lights in your house, most of those things are made with wiring that is made out of copper. Copper is a very good conductor, and it's a lot cheaper than gold and silver. Aluminum is also um, a lot less expensive, and aluminum is used for wiring too. Most houses uh, when they build a house, they put wiring through the walls so that, so that you have electrical outlets all over the house. Most of the wiring within the walls of the house, in, in most houses, is copper. Sometimes they make all that wiring out of aluminum, but usually it's copper. And one other thing I'll mention that's a good conductor is salt water. It turns out that um, when you dissolve salt in water, salt is sodium chloride, and that's commonly written as NaCl. And the Na is the chemical symbol for sodium, and Cl is the chemical symbol for chlorine. And when you dissolve salt in water, some of the sodium chloride breaks apart into sodium and chlorine. And when it does that, the chlorine grabs one of the electrons from the sodium and takes it with it. So it's sometimes written like this, a little negative sign next to the chlorine and a little positive sign next to the sodium. In other words, what naturally happens in salt water is some of the salt molecules break apart and you end up with little negative and positive particles floating around in the water. 
and they can move through the water and that is the movement of charge that is electric current so it's not just electrons moving it's this sodium ion moving or this chlorine ion moving and this term ion we'll see this again later that just means a charged particle but they can move through the water and that counts as electric current because electric current is the flow of charge now some materials that are good insulators these are things that don't conduct electric electricity very well wood for example plastic and and you see this uh, typical electric wire say you plug a lamp into the wall the wire is covered with plastic and that's called the plastic insulation you see that term used right there you don't want the wire exposed it's a fire hazard it's a um, an electrical shock hazard so the wires are always wrapped up in plastic rubber is a good insulator electricians that are working on electrical wiring especially if it's a involves a lot of voltage or a lot of current typically wear thick rubber gloves because the electricity does not flow through rubber very well at all glass is also a good electrical insulator and so is paper and I'll also mention that pure water is a good insulator if the water is pure that means there are no impurities in it such as salt there's no particles in the water that are breaking apart and becoming charged ions floating around it's just the H2O so there's nothing in there no charged particles to move around no charge to flow so it doesn't conduct electricity very well